Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with our Blooming Catholic Life and we're here today for our first, first look at the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 9. And where are we at? Verses 51 through, oh, there's no mark. I, I don't know, 51 through what? I Oh no, 51 through 56. It's a huge section today. Um, let's just jump right in. You know, Patrice Affiliate Spiritual Sancti Amen. I left my book downstairs. Uh, here's the thing I kind of panic sometimes on camera. <laughs> so let's just go ad lib. We know what St. Francis, the meaning, the gist of what St. Francis was saying. So let's look up here at this crucifix and say, Dear and Holy Father, we come before you, we bow before your Christ, and we ask you, as we open this holy gospel, to open our hearts, and open our minds, and open our lips, so that we may speak the truth to the world, but Lord, not our truth, but yours. Give us right faith, certain hope, perfect truth, and knowledge, so that we can discern and do your holy will. Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. In nomine Patris, Affiliate, Spiritus Sancti. Amen. And it came to pass, when the days of his assumption were accomplishing, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before his face, and going, they entered into a city of the Samaritans to prepare for him. And they received him not, because his face was of one going to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John had seen this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? And turning, he rebuked them, saying, You not, you know not of what spirit you are. The Son of Man came not to destroy souls, but to save. And they went into another town. And it came to pass, when the days of his assumption were accomplishing, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before his face, and going, they entered into a city of the Samaritans to prepare for him. And they received him not, because his face was of one going to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John had seen this, they said, Lord, wilt that command that we... Yes, wilt thou command fire, that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them. And turning, he rebuked them, saying, You know not of what spirit you are. The Son of Man came not to destroy souls, but to save. And they went into another town. And it came to pass, when the days of his assumption were accomplishing, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers before his face, and going, they entered into a city of the Samaritans to prepare for him. And they received him not, because his face was of one going to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John had seen this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? And turning, he rebuked them, saying, You know not of what spirit you are. The Son of Man came not to destroy souls, but to save. And they went into another town. Friends, there's so much to unpack here, just even on the basic level. I left my phone downstairs because I just had to put it on the charger. And so I would love to look up the Greek here. What do they keep saying with face? Why do they keep saying face? It makes me think of the Holy Face devotion. I apologize because the picture's facing me. I'm facing it now as I'm speaking to you. I have the, the sacred heart and name of Jesus. I have Our Lady of Fatima and I have a Holy Face relic up there. And, ah, <laughs> I want to know because they say face so many times. He's steadfast. First, it says about his assumption. So somebody else is putting him up. Is that putting him up on the cross? The days of his assumption were accomplishing. And he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. What does that expression mean? And he sent messengers before his face, right? And it, it just, it even reminds me about, um, who was it? Isaiah or Moses up on the mountain in the face of God and passing by, right? 
what does this mean? What is this expression? But that's what it's bringing to mind, that complete awe and majesty of God. He's bringing it all now. He's bringing it all to Jerusalem. He's not holding back anymore. That's what I'm getting from this. These are the days that are to be accomplished. This is it. He's not holding back. Like their minds are going to be opened to what's said. Their hearts are going to be open. Oh, that's like we just prayed for the San Damiano cross. Everything's going to be opened. It's not quite there yet. And he sent some people ahead of him to tell people. And he was constantly doing that, right? First, first John the Baptist came before him, right? But now his disciples, he had sent them out, both the 12 and the 72. He had sent them all out, right? Oh, maybe he hasn't sent the 72 out yet. Nope. Not yet. That's in chapter 10. I have a note right there, 72, but that's why that was on my mind. And he had sent messengers before him and they went to the Samaritans. Remember the, the Samaritan woman at the well and how all those people had received him there. So you'd think his reputation would have gone around him. But here it says, oh no, they're like, they see he's going to Jerusalem. And maybe they're like, we thought you came to save us. You, you came to save those guys too? Ew. No, you aren't welcome here anymore. And that's, as again, didn't I say in the last one, it had just a tinge of a, like ecumenism in there. And they wondered what that meant when there was the other guy casting out devils, but in Jesus' his name, and Jesus said, no. And here he is going to the Samaritans and Samaritans are like, you're saving the Jews too? No, nope, not welcome here anymore. And so I don't know that it's really speaking of ecumenism as the spirit of Vatican II talks about it. But this is the true, we are all one body of Christ, the humanity, right? And he's calling everyone, he's calling the saints and the sinners all together. Now, is that saying that we need, that people who come in don't have to follow any rules and they can practice as many sins as they want and it's all good to come in? No, you still, whoever comes, everybody's welcome to come in, but you do have to repent and, and do penance. Everyone does, whether you were born into this church or you're coming in from the outside. Christ is for everyone, but we all have that same calling to repent and believe the good news, to turn to God and to do penance for our sins and to sin no more. We're all called to that. Whether we were born in this church, we were born in another Christian church, or we were born Hindus or Buddhists or atheists, whatever family we were born in, wherever our journey has taken us along the way, whether we left, we're in this church and we left, whatever. We are all have one universal call and that is repent and believe the good news. And if you believe it, you're going to live it. And that does mean to sin no more. And we can't do that without his graces. <laughs> uh, we were, This came up today. I apologize because I, 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 was just on somebody else's case for this about um, speaking about things that you hear. And somebody was saying, well, I went to this church and we were all welcome at communion. I went to that church and we were all welcome to communion. Then we went to the Catholic church and we were not all welcome. We were told if we were not a practicing Catholic, we could not receive communion. Here's the thing. Non-practicing Catholics weren't welcome to receive communion either. You have to be a Catholic who is literally repenting and believing in the good news. And that includes going to confession and making amends so that you sin no more and begging God for that grace. So it's not even every Catholic is worthy to receive. So don't feel left out. It is, while it is medicine for you, you have to be someone who recognizes that you're sick and that you want to be sick no more and you're willing to do the things to not be sick anymore. There's a, st a stink bug staring at me from the hymnal we used in the last video. Sorry. <sighs> He's like, whoa, she's, she's excited. She's on fire. Yeah, little one, you're fine for now. I'll let you outside in a little bit. Hmm. I think that's something I needed to hear. Pope's not wrong when he calls the Eucharist medicine, but in order to take medicine... You have to know you're sick. You don't take medicine if you don't think you need it. No, nobody just for funsies takes medicine. Unless it's like painkillers and drugs. And then again, that's not even receiving worthily, is it? That is abuse of the medicine. And there is a price you pay for abusing medicine. And there will be a price you pay if you receive communion unworthily. And if the priest knows that you are not properly disposed to receive that communion, 
The penalty is on him as well. He bears that as a shepherd for his sheep. I feel like I'm going to lose sight of this stink bug and, well, live well, little friend. Ah, <laughs> I think I needed to hear that. I needed to get out. That's something that's been, you know, we talk about Lexio Divino is like, like chewing and mulling on scripture. And I, I've been really, these are things that have been bothering me for a while. And I, the spirit just apparently gave me the words to say it. That's why we say that prayer before the crucifix to open it up, open up my mind, my heart, you know, walk with us along Emmaus and break open the scriptures for us again, Jesus. And then let us have communion with you when our hearts and minds and souls are in union with you. <laughs> that is communion. When we are united, not just symbolically, but when we're really and truly united. Ugh. I needed this. Thank you. Friends, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the good Lord bless you. Nomine Patris, Filii, Spiritus Sancti. Amen.